Okay. Um, let's see what happened here because I have no clue what just happened um, or if anyone will join this again. Here we go. Oh, man. I completely stuffed that up. So I think everyone's on the old one, are they? Um, um, here we go. Let's wait for some people to join this one because this is a complete nightmare. Here we go. Oh, man. I don't know what's happened. Um, let's delete that one. Yes. So, okay, we've got a few people on here. <laughs> All right, can everyone hear me? I'm so sorry about that. This is going to be the weirdest replay because I'm going to have to have part one and part two now because I suck at doing this YouTube stuff. So um, I think everyone's here. Well, we've got – can everyone hear me? I'm good. I'm just a bit, like, upset that I stuffed that up. I don't know what happened. So I think when I was disconnecting the charger because I've got a MacBook Pro, which sucked, don't get one, because it doesn't have USB plugs, it – um. And it disconnected the adapter and then it wouldn't sync back into the live stream. So I had to restart it and very, very annoying. But hopefully some people join again and ask me some questions. But yeah, um, this will be a weird replay. I'm just trying to delete the old one so that people know to come here because the other one is still like this. There was another one that I made, but oh, here we go. This will be better. So, all right. All right. We've got 16 people back. So thank you. All right. <laughs> I don't think I deserve anything right now. Um, I stuffed that up bad, but everything's working. Yeah, this will be weird too on my like um, on my uh, like at the end of each week on YouTube. If you have like a YouTube channel, you get like an analytics summary, which is pretty cool. I really like that. Um, it'll be like, oh, this week you gain more views by having um, by uploading more videos because I just did this one. So yeah, but uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about the stuff up, guys. Um, how many Anubis did I order? I ordered like four or five, maybe three. I don't even remember. But there's a few of them if you guys want to grab them. So, um, But don't feel like you have to do anything. So, yeah. Someone posted in a Facebook Pleco page they were looking for wild caught zebra Plecos. Not sure if they were trolling. If the authorities were kind of trying to catch them, be careful who you talk to. Yeah if, like enough, yeah, if the authorities talked to me, I would not be that worried about it. I don't think that like they can catch you by doing that. But... Um, there's no chance they're going to get any unless they've smuggled them. So, yeah. Oh, is that you that got the order, Bobby? Thank you so much. Um, I have to send you some extras, some little bonuses. I definitely will. Um, but, yeah, thank you for the dono again, Jack. Uh, do you have any tips for growing plants? Yeah, I've got tons. So, obviously, I'll just tell you that there is some videos that I've made um, about this. But my tips are always um, – depends what plants you're growing because each plant's going to be a bit different. Um, you're going to want like, okay, let's just talk about, I, I'm guessing you're saying like my, my like kinds of plants. So I always just try not to mess with them too much. So if you deroot them and stuff like that, it's always going to be bad. Um, if you want them to grow quicker, put some, put some ferts in. Um, you can do CO2 and stuff like that as well. Um, and that'll be better. I guess like a plant, the way a plant works is it does photosynthesis. It's such a tongue twister. Photosynthesis, photosynthesis, and basically what that what that does is it converts CO two to oxygen, and it uses that to make some energy. It eats that and kind of grows. I think that's basically how it's done. So um, you're gonna want to try and do that. So like, you just want, my plants don't need a lot of light, and they don't need any ferts and stuff like that. So I just always say like a good deep substrate is probably pretty good for a lot of the plants, and um, just uh. Just like, yeah, that's pr pretty much it. Just watch those videos because I've got a lot of information that's really packed into it. So, yeah, that'll be really, really good. But thanks so much for the donos. I really do appreciate that. Um, here, I'll just quickly answer a few more questions. But I was going to make sure that there's no um, there's no other one that's still up on YouTube because otherwise heaps of people could just be waiting there and being mad at me because there's no, there's no video. So let me just – hopefully my internet doesn't crash because when we start to upgrade uh, – Sorry, I can't multitask. When we start to upgrade the um, the stuff, like the channel and all that kind of stuff, I definitely need to get better internet. But yeah. 
Hey, Austin, thank you for the compliment. Um, Lazarus the Fish Boy, I see you commenting a lot of my videos, so I really do appreciate that. But how's my journey on YouTube been? So, like, I wouldn't say it's been a journey. Um, I don't know. I've just, like, I started making videos a couple of years ago, and then I made, like, a heap of different styles of uh, videos. I made, like, weird ones. So I made these videos where they're actually really effective, but the YouTube algorithm doesn't like to promote them as much because they're not long. So I made heaps of like three minute 50 videos with like seven tips. And I just go give people a heap of information. I wouldn't talk like you wouldn't see my face. And that was pretty good as a creator because like I didn't really have to like get over that whole weird thing at the start where you have to like stand in front of a camera. Um, so yeah, that's how it started. And then I did that during grade 12. So my last year of school and and then, yeah, so I was making videos and not a lot of people at school knew because <laughs> it was a bit weird, but um, I, like, I'm not the kind of guy who cares about that kind of stuff either. Like, um, like I'm comfortable in my own skin and uh, I'm not afraid to tell someone, like, it's, I don't know. It's just, like, to me, it didn't really bother me. Like, if you had a problem with it, it's, like, why are you trying to, like, take me down for trying to do something? But... So I was just doing that, making those videos. And then I made a couple of videos where I was standing in front of the camera. And that was about eight months after I'd been making YouTube videos. And by that point, I actually had quite a few of those early videos do pretty well. So that was cool. But um, it was a weird stage too when I was transitioning my content to being like in front of the camera. They were very, very awkward videos. And then I think I made videos all the way up until I finished school and then after school for a bit. And then at the start of last year, I had a break for like, three or four months, which wasn't a good decision for my growth. And a lot of people weren't around for that. There was a couple of people here that like I can recognize names from quite a long time. Um, but I lost like a lot of traction from just like taking a break. And I think I didn't know whether like I wanted to make YouTube videos and stuff like that. I just, um, it didn't burn out. It was just like at the time I started doing university and all that kind of stuff. So um, it did get very, very, uh, like busy and confusing. So I definitely needed the time off of YouTube, but then I came back to it, um, <laughs> had to get used to making videos again and the rest is kind of up till now. So like I'm, I'd say I'm over that awkward stage now. My content from the start of the year, I'm very impressed with how it's evolved. Um, I think that the quality is a lot better and I think people are enjoying it a little bit better, but um, yeah, at the start of the vid like start of the year, I just had to like make a bunch of videos just to like get used to it again. And um, yeah, I mean like that's just kind of how the journey's been. It's been a bit weird, like um, making content. But I don't know what I could say really about it. I've like I I absolutely love doing it, which is the best thing. So I hope you guys can see that like in the videos that I'm really I really do enjoy making the videos and keeping fish. So yeah. Yeah, yeah, the channel has evolved a lot, though. Like, a lot of people have been around for a while. Like, I know Brad, who's commenting, has been around for ages. But, um, yeah. Thanks for another donor, Jack. Um, what actually made you decide to... What actually made you decide to make videos? So, I don't remember. I think that I was watching heaps of, like, videos on YouTube at that time when I started. And I was on summer holidays, and that's... I don't know. I was, I had like a little business where I was um, mowing lawns and stuff like that. And uh, I thought that I could breed fish for profit and I just kind of like recorded it. And that's kind of how it started. Um, Cause I was always keeping fish before that, but the first couple of videos, there was like a lot of guppies and cherry shrimp, which I was breeding for a little bit of profit and stuff like that. So that's how it was like, I don't know, just kind of out of boredom and, I thought I could do it. I'm always kind of like, if someone else is, can do something, I, I feel like I can do it. So, yeah. Any tips for breeding emerald corridors? <laughs> um, I, I don't know. There's so many different types of corries. Um, I haven't bred corries yet, which is might make a lot of people be like, why is this guy telling us to do anything? So that's just a quick disclaimer. Um, <clears throat> I would say, yeah, cold water changes. You want to give them something natural to lay their eggs on. You don't want them laying on like the glass and stuff like that. So maybe some moss. 
just when you're breeding fish, you're trying to imitate where they would breed in the wild. So that's just the direction I would push you in, but I can't give you pH, GH, KH exacts because I don't know. You know what I just realized? Yeah, <laughs> a little bit. It's a bit hard to explain to your friends, hey. Um, I do read the comment section, Jim. I do. I like. I, there's been a lot of comments, so I always try and read them all. It's just started bucketing in my area. Whoa! Came out of nowhere. That's good. It's filling up my water tank for the breeding of pistos. So that's good. But yeah, it's going nuts. So if the internet drops out, it's because we've just had a massive storm. So I'm sorry about that. And if the microphone drops out, it's because I messed with it. So <laughs> sorry about that as well. Um. But yeah, I do. Um, I think that like, yeah, I try and reply to all of them. S sometimes like I spend a lot of time editing and recording. So um, when I can, I try and reply. And like, especially if there's, if there's like questions that I, um, I always receive and there's a video for it. Sometimes it's like, I'll just go to the next one because if someone asks me like a really, I, I don't call them silly questions. It's just like questions that would require one Google search. Um, then I can't really offer a lot and like, um, I'm better off replying to someone else's comment that's a bit uh, easier to reply to. But I, if like I'm not doing anything, I always try and reply. I don't, I'm not. I'm trying not to sound like I'm better than doing it because I always try and do it. It just does become a lot sometimes when there's like a couple of hundred of them. So um, if I decide to rain after all this overcast weather, yeah, it's like just bucketing nuts. It looks really good. I wouldn't rather be doing anything in the rain except for live streaming fish with you guys in my room where it's nice and warm. Did you hear that? That was a bit weird. Um, I've just started keeping fish and I'm mid-age. Yeah, that's really cool. A lot of people actually do get started quite late in their um, quite late in their life, I'd say. A lot of people don't start young. Quite a few do, but like a lot of people start up at like a bit older and that's fine. It's probably better because you get – a bit more control over the speed of how you progress because you don't have to beg a parent to drive you to the fish store and you can, you normally live in your, um, in your own house. So you can buy as many tanks as you want, given that if you're like partner lets you, but yeah, it's 11 PM in New York. What time is it? It's one o'clock in Brizzy, Brisbane, Australia. How do you sustain so many tanks? So I like lots of water changes. I don't fully have control over it sometimes. Like it does get a bit much. Um, I'm planning on um, obviously like at some point getting out of here and doing it somewhere else where it'll all be automatic and I'll be making crazy better content once it's a little bit easier. But yeah. Um, do I wipe my teeth? They look super shiny. <laughs> Thank you. No, I don't. No, I don't um, do that. Do you know where to get pea puffers in Australia and how much they are? I can't tell you where. They are about two hundred plus dollars each because we've got, I think, import laws on them. You're not allowed to bring them in, so they're very expensive. Wherever you can find them, just get them because they're not easy to get. What am I studying at uni? I'm doing a degree called property economics, which is, um, I, it's interesting because I've always had an interest in, um developments and all that kind of stuff and not like just saying that i genuinely do but obviously i'm more interested in fish so i'd rather be doing that but um that's just like a like a priority for me too is doing the degree and over here it's a bit more affordable to do a degree than it is in the us and stuff like that it's a bit easier so i've been doing that do you still have shrimp if so would you sell them no i don't have shrimp at the moment i've dropped them all because I keep like a pistogram as an angel fish that just slut, like just destroy them and eat them. So I'm sorry. <laughs> sorry. I can't sell you any. Um, yeah. Oh, cows in nearly 19. Yeah. We got to like all, I don't know. We got to get into like the, um, the fish clubs after this is all done. Cause it seems like you're breeding a lot of the stuff that I'm doing too. So yeah, probably have to set up like some kind of like young aquarium keeper society, something weird like that. Be pretty cool. Because a lot of the clubs, like I go to the auctions and stuff like that. It's a lot, of, a lot of old people that, yeah, I don't know. I don't have a problem with it though. I like, it's just like, I feel like sometimes they don't like 
young kids, but I could be completely mistaken. So yeah. Um, what would I recommend a fifty in a fifty-five gallon for a beginner hobbyist? Um, I'd probably just fill it up with fish, but I've got a video of a bunch of stuff you can put in there, like my ideas. But yeah, a uh, fifty-five gallon, I'd probably do six angels, and you'll get some breeding and stuff like that. Um, oh, Jack again with another question. Thank you. Um, do you have any freshwater substrate recommendations? So, uh, yeah, like fine gravel or sand is normally what I do. I don't do big coarse gravel. Um, so I do, you can do play sand from like a hardware store. If you wash it, that's really cheap. You can do hardware store, um, pebbles and that, uh, there's a bunch of stuff you can do. Um, I'd recommend depends if you're going to plant it and put roots in it, just do a very fine pebble and not like big. You want them to be like about two, one millimeter, two millimeters. And, um, it'll, uh, yeah, it'll work pretty well for you. That's just what I'd recommend. Sand's a little bit harder with plants because they don't really like settle into it as well, but you can definitely do it. I like sand a little bit better. I just, I don't know why. I think it's easier. I just kind of always liked it. I think that I like, I don't really like the super fine sand, but I like the kind of grainy sand. I'm struggling to get my angelfish eggs to hatch. Any advice? Um, leave them with the parents and see if they actually hatch because maybe you're pulling them before he fertilizes them. So that'll give you, um, that'll let you know if that's the problem. Maybe the males are dud. Um, the other thing is maybe they're fungusing over. Uh, maybe they're freezing overnight. There's a whole lot of things. Leave them with the parents, see if they hatch and let, like leave it, leave them with the, with the eggs until you get some of the hatch and then you can start to draw them out. So yeah. Yeah. A club would be pretty cool. I think that like we should just, um, get a lot of people joining the, the main kind of club. So there's like, in my area, there's, um, there's like all kinds of, there's like Angfa, which is like Australian native fish, which is pretty cool. I'm not a member of any clubs yet, but I'm definitely looking to. It's just a bad time to join clubs because there's no real point yet. So, yeah. Jack, stop donating me stuff, dude. I got to like refund you some of this because it's, it's stop. Yeah, thank you. Um, I've heard mixed reports about shrimp or at least cho shrimp being good for nursing fish eggs. Oh, okay, yeah. I've actually heard about this too. So I was thinking about doing that. Um, I think that it's actually true that they do not eat the eggs. But, I mean, you can only know if you experiment. I'm not the person to tell you because I've never done it. But I think that's true. Like you can put them in there and they'll just kind of like eat the fungus and stuff off of them, which would be – that would completely change my fish keeping if I knew that because I put them in all my tanks with eggs. I was wondering where you make your thumbnails as I love those kind of thumbnails for my channel. So like my thumbnails are made on Canva, but I spend a lot of time doing them. So like I do a bunch of like little edits and layering and um, the best way to get better at something is just to do it a thousand times. And I haven't done it a thousand times yet, but I've done quite a few um, thumbnails and I do them on Canva. A lot of YouTubers do them on Canva. It's free, super easy to use and uh, just get good at it. Are the new epistogrammers coming to your website? So yeah, I ordered from my wholesaler, which they've been pretty good. They've been eating really well and I'm putting them through quarantine. They'll be available next week given that they keep eating. I fatten them up a little bit and I want them to be eating flakes and stuff like that before I send them, but they'll be on the website soon. Um, is my audience mainly from the USA or Australia? So all my audience is from the USA, which is um, like, I mean, like doesn't surprise me, but for like business and stuff like that, it does make it a bit tricky because it's um obviously like only a part of my audience can buy a product that I sell, but that's fine. Like, cause you just have to, that's just how it is. So yeah. But most of the people are in the States, which is cool too. Like, cause I'm actually a US citizen. So if I go over, I can go over whenever I want and all that kind of stuff. Obviously I'm not right now. It stopped raining now, but I'm um, not right now, but, like in the future I can. <clears throat> okay. What are you going to do about your, what are you going to do with your endless? Also those black worms you bought, if you put them in sharp gravel, it'll slice them up and then, and they will multiply. I didn't think that maybe they will. I'm not too sure though, but um, so I think I might, I don't know. I'm kind of holding the endless. I've got them actually listed on 
um, just online on Gumtree and people are making me offers for the colony. I've got a couple of like silly offers, but you get that when you sell anything. Um, for the right price, I'll just drop the colony so that I can make more space for other stuff. Um, I mean, they've had their time, but the other thing that's kind of limiting me is like if I'm going to get out of here soon, I make it sound really bad, like like move out, um, then I'd rather have them because I can have a tank full of them. And a lot of people want them, which is cool. So it's like it wouldn't be sensible for me to drop them if I'm supplying them to people who want them. Like I enjoy them, but with limited space, I'd enjoy something else. Um, wow. A really pregnant female guppy, yet it has no gravity spot. Is this an issue? So yeah, I'd be careful. She might have a uh, dropsy, which you have to give a Google search and have a look at. So that could be a problem. Um, but sometimes their gravid spots not that that black. Like some of the really blonde guppies don't have really dark gravid spots. So um, just be careful of that. Don't bloat her or anything like that. You don't want to overfeed her because otherwise she'll just get dropsy. Um, yeah. What software do you, do you do your editing on? So I used to use iMovie on my phone, which is why it has all the iMovie guitar music on the original videos, but I've switched over to Final Cut Pro and I like it a lot more because it lets me edit other styles of videos. So like if I wanted to edit videos for someone else, I now know how to do it on a professional software. So yeah, that's uh, what I use now, Final Cut. I know a lot of people use like Premiere Pro and stuff like that, but Final Cut's so easy to work around and it's very similar to iMovie. Um. Okay, so they do clean and not eat the eggs. No need for methylene blue. <laughs> yeah. Um, what age did I start fish keeping? <clears throat> so I was 13. It was for my 13th birthday. I got my first tank. So that's pretty cool. But yeah. Yeah, I did say your name. None. There we go. Dying of happiness. <laughs> yeah, so I started at 13, which was like a pretty good age because... Um, gave me a lot to do after school. I uh, enjoyed it a lot. So, yeah. Um, but, yeah, no, I, I really do apologize for before. It's going to be really weird on the analytics because, like, I'm just going to have a look now. If I, like, restart the uh, – I'm not going to restart this, but I'm just looking at the um, – okay. So the live stream is going to be a bit weird for the people who are re-watching this because it's basically just going to be, like, the end of the last one, it's going to stop having thing, and I'm just going to be like going like, and no one's going to be able to hear me, and then it's going to be the second one. So I'm going to have to make it very obvious that there's two because um, otherwise, yeah. But I think now because now we're on, um, now I'm not really talking about what I was talking about before. So if you guys have any questions, obviously, about selling fish to a local fish store, ask them. But uh, this is more just like Q&A, I guess, now. So, yeah. Um, have you ever built your own aquarium? No, I haven't yet. Uh Probably won't because, like, I don't not, like, think that I'm able to do it. It's just that I'd rather pay a professional. So, yeah, I don't really, like, I can get them, you can get them for pretty cheap from, like, aquarium builders and stuff like that. You don't need to buy, like, a, uh, you don't need to buy, like, a big commercial one from a pet store. Like, I'm not saying not to, just, like, you will save money if you don't. So, yeah. Um. I order my fish from a wholesaler that I can't disclose. Sorry. That wouldn't be a good business decision. How would I sell my fish without a local fish store in Australia? So um, put them on Gumtree and you'll either have to ship them out, which uh, could be tricky. Um, what else can you do? There's no – I've always wanted to do it, but I don't know if there's enough people in Australia that – like the laws here are so annoying with quarantine and stuff. Like, like all the – Border laws based on biosecurity and stuff like that are very, very annoying. And I've always wanted to set up like an aqua bid for Australia, but there's a lot of limits on what you can do there. And like you have to take your liability away from it and put full liability on people using the platform. And it's very, very tricky and expensive to do. So maybe that's a very later on project. That'd be really good to have like an Australian um, aqua bid, but 
I think Gumtree, list them on Gumtree and just say shipping to certain areas or um, I guess make the trip once a week to find a local fish store, like drive, do the three-hour drive or whatever. Um, but like it's up to you. Um, how long does it take dwarf neon rainbows to become fully grown? It takes quite a while. Rainbows are one of the, like they're not as bad as some other fish, but they take a long time to get to um, sexual maturity. I think I'd say eight months average, which is quite a long time. But like, for instance, you can have angels that grow like so quick, but they're not sexually mature for a while too. So fully grown, I'd say, yeah, like I've had them grow up in six months, but like eight months. I could be completely off though because like my fish are different to other people's, but I had a spawn earlier this year that's only just started to reach maturity. It's just six months, but there's still some really small guys in there, so they're not fully grown yet. Um, how are your Cory colony going? Bought my own today. Also got Odessa barbs and Electric Blue Rams. Um, they're doing good. I haven't tried to breed them because I filled up all the tanks I was going to breed them in. I've been collecting the just albinos, which isn't like anything special, but they're definitely going to be happening at some point. It's just a matter of when. It's, uh, it's a lot of things, those stuff to do just to get out of here, like to get my own little space for this stuff. Um, what's an alternative to water conditioner? Um, I don't, yeah, I can understand. Like it can be a bit expensive, but you, I wouldn't do anything else except for it. Like, um, I don't know. I don't want to give you permission to say that you can leave it outside for like 24 hours and it'll go away because it does work a little bit, but, um, just, just buy it. Cause like, um, it's, it's insurance on the fact that you could have, uh, I mean, like you're not going to have problems. So yeah, I mean, you can do RO water like, but I wouldn't recommend it. How do you move house with tanks? I, again, I can't give you an answer. Um, you got to probably restart a lot of tanks, um, drain them down to like 10%, take all the fish out and then move them in the back of a truck. You've got a lot of moving and stuff like that to do. Um, like you got a lot of trips, I guess, to make when you're moving tanks because um, that's not an easy thing to give advice on. Uh, yeah, drain them. If you've got setups that you want to keep, Hopefully you don't have like those huge ones with the rocks all up in the corners and stuff like that again that are gonna tumble. Just drain it down to as low as you can. They can be very heavy with all the substrate though. So sometimes it's better to just drop all the tanks, either sell them, which I don't recommend, or just get all the bare bottom, like get them all like empty and put your fish into I don't know, wherever you're going, put like them all in like uh, it's hard to say, but you need it's it's too hard to move tanks that are already set up easily because I've tried to do it before. It's just not easy. Um, are there any fish plants you want that you cannot get in Australia? So yeah, uh, not that I cannot get, but not, but like cannot get easy. So I can't get L46 zebra plecos easy, which I want the zebra plecos if you're from the States. Um, I can't get them easy. I really want them, but you can't get like arowanas and stuff like that either. Or, or koi's. I saw someone ask me about that before. You can get koi's here. I have some pearl down here fried, but no, if you saw it, prepare foods. Um, you can do like, I think coral food, um, which is just like golden pearls and stuff like that. You can feed because it's very, very small. Um, or I just do that. I do like a very fine, or like the Hakari dust. on Like that sometimes works all right, but... Obviously, Ifisoria is the best way to go, but I'm trying to find a way to also work around Ifisoria. Like, because personally, I don't like culturing it. It's not reliable and it's not easy to culture. It seems very easy, but it's very complicated at the same time. Sometimes it can take eight weeks to culture it and sometimes it can take one. So it's not a simple thing to do, but um, I think they're called golden pearls. I'll look it up real quickly because I'm interested in getting some too, but I'm not. And now it just comes up. Um, yeah, it's it's yeah, yeah. So you can buy it. They're like pretty pretty tiny, and they're pretty good. So I'd do that. 
I picked up a six inch long fin, six inch long fin lemon blue eye male bristle nose. Yeah, they're sick. They look so good. Any tips on breeding bristle noses? Um, so bristle noses are like so easy. You just need a cave really and a male and a female and they kind of do their own thing. So I'd feed them up really heavily. Um, water parameters, obviously just a zero ammonia um, and temperature like 24, 25 degrees and you're pretty good to go. Any plans for a new endless train? Not soon until I get more, more space, but obviously it's on the books. <clears throat> um, yeah, cheap stuff seen L46, 600 Australian dollars. Yeah, so like if you buy a ton of Zebra Plecos, you can get them for cheaper. But yeah, like about $600, $500, even up to 700000 sometimes, like very expensive, but I want some because they're cool. My neon tetras are swimming jerkly, head pointing downwards. What could this be a symptom of? So maybe neon tetra disease, but it's not a certain thing. Um, or, yeah, I'd say neon tetra disease, but I, I cannot be certain. Like I don't have a photo or anything like that, so I can't give you a guarantee, but sometimes it's very hard. Um, what else? Yeah, so like, yeah, the, the golden pearls <clears throat> are very interesting because I haven't done them yet, but yeah. There's some places that sound like 600 microns, which is tiny. Um, but yeah, if you like, I guess, I don't know. I really want to experiment with them because I'm, I'm kind of sick of Invisoria at the moment. But um, yeah. Um, yeah. So yeah, we're talking about... Some people are talking about koi's in Australia. So yeah, for instance, you can't get them in Queensland, but I think you can get them in some other areas. But I'm not that big on them because I don't have space for a pond. But yeah, um, I wouldn't. I re I really wouldn't want them. But I think you can get them in some places. But you definitely can't get them where I'm from. Um, that's just the weird thing about Australia. I don't really like it that much, but I can understand it. It's better for the environment, and it really like we could have everyone be able to have access to a lot of these species but it just takes one guy to ruin it and that's what it is so like one point in time like it was fine to have um <clears throat> it was fine to have like certain things but i mean it just takes one guy to put a goldfish in a pond and then ruin it so yeah um please get convict cichlids and breed them i should do a video on breeding convict cichlids in the uh in a bucket because they're so easy now i would breed them but um you can't you can't sell them easily fish stores don't want them and yeah right see you jack thanks so much for joining in i really do appreciate that thank you um yeah because i think i'm pretty my voice has been getting better at like staying alive for two hours but um man it's it's hard talking for two hours. Your sinuses get all weird and like your ears sound a bit weird and your voice sounds a bit weird. So um, I think I've been doing better at doing the lives. Um, I think that a lot of people have seen me be a bit more comfortable. Um, I'm definitely, I want to get that webcam so bad because um, it's, it's annoying me that like when I watch the replays just to make sure the quality was okay and all that kind of stuff, that it's not 1080p and perfect. I always try and make the best stuff ever. And uh yeah, it's annoying me, but I'm definitely trying to trying to get better equipment for this, but we have to wait till after all this silly stuff going on. Any recommend any recommendations on the easiest shrimp to keep for beginners? So definitely either ghost shrimp or I'd do um cherry shrimp are like hundred percent the easiest. They're just so easy to do. So those are the best. Don't do like crystal reds or anything like that because they cost a bit. And if you don't have the right water and you're a beginner, you probably just can stun them and kill them. So just do cherries. But I always say with shrimp, you always have to acclimate them with a drip acclimation system. Always like just Google that up if you don't know what it is. But just, um, just yeah, drip acclimate them and you won't stress them out and kill them. So yeah. Um, 
was going to say, how much is the webcam? So normally a webcam is about like 150 bucks ish Australian. So I mean, I've got like, I'm, I've literally like, I can buy it. It's just that there's none to buy. So heaps of them are either were 150 bucks and now cost 700, which is stupid. Like I mean, that's not worth the time. Uh, well, that's not worth the money. Just it's not worth it. So um, I'm just waiting until obviously it gets a little bit better and I can pre-order something like that. Um, it'll be a bit better, but I think we're just we're just gonna have to bear with this for the time being because it's just yeah, it's annoying me too. So sorry about that. Best personalized food for sale in Australia as I can't find good food for them. So the best food is just your natural stuff. So canned green beans are awesome, or um, zucchini is good too um, on a fork or something like that. Just give it a wash, um, and then just like a curry first bite. So you don't need anything complicated for them. They're just like a lot of veg matter. And if you have other fish in the tank, if they need a bit of protein, they'll eat whatever falls to the bottom sometimes. So, yeah. How many fry do bristle nose normally have in a spawn? So I'm going to say about 50, but obviously it's going to change. I'm going to actually Google that because um, I'm not too sure. Sometimes I have like 70 and sometimes I have like 10. Yeah, I think it, I'd say about 50. So... Okay, well, 150 to 200. So it depends um, on a bunch of different factors. So it, the Google says 150 to 200 day, but yeah. Um, I, I've i been getting about 70, 60, sometimes more. That's a lot of plecos to be dealing with though. What's the best pleco for a... 215 liter tank with convict cichlids just do bristlenose because they can take a bit of a beating cheaper don't do anything expensive because the convicts yeah just do bristlenose um got a lot of things can you do outdoor gup tubs and guppies uh, can you do outdoor tubs with guppies in the future um i probably won't be because it's a bit hard here. They get really, really hot. So like in summer, it can get up to like nearly 40 degrees Celsius, which is like crazy hot. So it'll probably just kill a lot of fish. Um, but I mean, nothing's stopping you. If you keep it in the show, it might be all right. Happy birthday, Caden. Um, yeah, I don't know. I think that 720p is still pretty like dodgy, um, it doesn't look great when you stream it. So, yeah, I don't know if it's the internet or whatever, but I'm um, trying to make it work. I was, getting a, I was thinking getting a pistol grounds, but then I watched one of your cares on them. He says it's not good for beginners. So the reason I say that is because of the price in my area. Um, they can be pretty easy to take care of. Just the reason I have – the only reason I'd say that is I don't think that they're hard fish to take care of. It's just that beginners always kind of make the same mistakes, which is – they just, I don't know, they don't understand like the, the nitrate cycle. They don't understand like they shouldn't clean the filter with um, tap water, like just simple things like that, which you don't want to make a mistake on with an expensive fish. So <clears throat> that's why I say it. if you're a beginner and you have like a pretty decent understanding of all that kind of stuff and you back yourself to do it, um, then go for it. But yeah. Are microworms stinky? Um, I wouldn't say so. They're like a little bit potent. They're kind of yeasty. And sometimes they're um, like they, they can be smelly, but they're not like they're not like really bad. Like infusoria is so disgusting, but yeah. So yeah. Best way to raise GH in tap water for warm for water changes to cherry shrimp tank. Um All right, I think that's a question. Um, when can guppy fry live with the adult guppies? So once they once they can't fit in the mouth easily, that's when. Are there any aquarium fish native to Australia? So yeah, most of the rainbow fish can come from like northern Australia. Um, what else? There's like um, barras and barramundis and stuff like that. But yeah, can you feed microworms to a pistachio fry? Definitely. I, I recommend that highly because 
you can free, feed brine shrimp, feed the microworms as like a filler food during the day and feed some like like first bites and stuff like that. It's a perfect diet for them and they're going to love it. Yeah, I don't know. I'm kind of running out of things to uh, – I think, yeah, some gobies are also native to Australia. So my voice is getting really tired. Um, I've also got to <coughs> finish up some editing for uh, the – the week's videos i've got a few things planned so um yeah i've got to do like some thumbnails and stuff like that today and uh i yeah i don't know it's been a fun stream i've had a lot of people come in and have a chat and i really do i like i love doing these streams because i actually get to talk to you guys instead of just reading comments it's just a it's a way better um i don't know way to connect with an audience I, it sounds a bit weird but yeah i've really enjoyed today um, I'm 19 years old, by the way. Uh, someone just asked, so I don't really think that matters at all. But um, what else we got? Is there any other questions? Is there a way to tell the age of a guppy? <laughs> Not really. Just by like looks. I don't know. You can't really have a good guess. But um, yeah, thanks so much, everyone, for watching, though. I'm going to probably head off now. Um, yeah, like I said, I'll be doing this, try and do this every week. I'm going to try and get a more consistent time. Um, and next time I'm trying not to have te technical difficulties, but, um, yeah, thank you so much everyone for watching. I like, I'm just, I don't know. I've lost words that people even watch these things. So I really do appreciate it guys. Thank you so much. And, uh, I will see you guys in the next one. See ya. Bye.